Hi, welcome back to Buddhism 101. Today we finish up our discussion of morality. And the final aspect of morality is, refers to right livelihood. So we'll be looking today at uh, how uh, our livelihood plays a part in our protection of uh, the mind through our actions and our speech. The first aspect of livelihood in regards to how it affects our meditation is um, these the types of livelihood that will, um, by their very nature, tend to lead to uh, distraction and potentially corruption of the mind. And there's five types of livelihood that are considered to be wrong livelihood in that sense, in the sense that they affect your uh, spiritual well-being. The first is um, the selling of weapons. So uh, selling handguns and so on is considered to be a wrong livelihood. Second is selling of animals, so the live animals um, or human beings, slavery of course, but uh, animals are considered to be beings just like humans and so engaging in, in the trade of animals has uh, ethical ramifications. Um, especially in terms of having to cage them and so on, and, and uh, the, the, well, the selling of animals is considered to be problematic. Um, among, uh, meat, selling meat is considered to be problematic because you're dealing with uh, killing and you have to engage with butchers and so on, so the type of people you'd be engaging in. And of course the activity meat, of course, is problematic at best. Um, Selling intoxicants, of course, is um, wrong livelihood because you're dealing with drunks and you're getting people drunk, you're making money off of people's bad habits, um, something that leads them to intoxication. And finally, uh, selling poison. So if you're selling any rat poison or, or chemicals uh, meant for killing, like pesticides or so on, this sort of thing is... Um, no, you're selling things that are immoral. It's all, all of these things are should be fairly clear that you're 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 making money off of immorality. And uh, again, the the point there is that these these activities, the actual selling itself, the act of selling is not immoral. You're just moving stuff around, taking money, giving stuff. But because of the nature of them, it's it's very close to closely involved with immoral activity, and therefore highly unadvisable. Uh, considered to be wrong livelihood in the Buddhist sense. Um, but on a more general level, uh, the, um, the essence of wrong livelihood, which we'll be talking about later when we get into the Eightfold Noble Path, refers to um, any type of livelihood, any, any means of uh, furthering your existence or your own well-being through uh, wrong speech or wrong action. And so that, that refers back to the five precepts and, and the engagement in immoral activities like killing, stealing, cheating, uh, lying. Any, if, if, if any of these activities um, are used for the furtherance of one's livelihood, then it's considered to be wrong livelihood. Uh, but Buddhism goes even deeper than that. And if you want to really understand right livelihood in a meditator sense, uh, a meditator shouldn't engage uh, in any type of livelihood whatsoever. Right livelihood means the giving up of seeking for material possessions, even to the extent of uh, one's personal survival. So um, what this means is doing what you do and, 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 and acting and living your life, um, whether it be during a meditation course or on a broader scale as a monastic, as a monk, as a recluse, um, by not uh, providing or, or not seeking out remuneration for your uh, actions, not doing things for the purpose of getting something in return, so not having any livelihood whatsoever. And this is how monks subsist. Um, monks will, um, we take vows to give up money, to give up any type of bartering, any type of trading, and so we teach and we Whenever, when we teach, we do it without expectation of remuneration or reimbursement of any kind. And we live our lives not hoping for people to uh, praise us or to honor us or to support us in any way. We do it fully aware that we may receive no support, that we may 
uh, we may starve, we may go, go be cold, we may be homeless and so on. And uh, the, it, it's a, it's, this is um, it's a powerful sort of um, determination or, or state of mind of total renunciation where you let, um, essentially you let your karma take over, you let the universe take over and if people think to give you food or, or shelter or to support you then they can do it of their own regard and you make a determination in your mind to be free from any sort of need for livelihood. Now for, for most people this, this um, is uh, confined to a meditation course so during the meditation course you uh, accept whatever you're given as a result as a part of the meditation course when people give you food you eat when they whatever shelter they give you whatever room they give you whatever um, things you're provided with during the meditation course you, you of course give up your livelihood basically and the point is no conducting business during the course um, but um, in, in essence what we're moving towards and what a meditator moves towards is less and less livelihood, less and less interest in one's own personal well-being, and more and more interest in acceptance, accepting things as they are. Um, so right, li right livelihood for a monastic is to give up any sort of seeking. And so it's true that monks are allowed to go on alms round, and so to the extent of, of, uh, of providing for our existence, we can walk through the village and see essentially see whether anyone is looking to give food on that day. It's, um, the closest we would get to actually seeking out food is to go and see if there's anyone who wants to give. Not going and, and asking or going and begging, um, but simply going and seeing if there's anyone. And, and we're allowed, of course, to take if people give us food. Um, but, but essentially having no interest in livelihood. And this is an important determination. It helps us to let go of this uh, distraction and the greed and the attachment to personal comfort and so on. Now, um, th so this is the final, the final aspect of morality and again I just want to recap um, because some of this might seem quite extreme, um, going back to um, the use of the requisites, people are com commenting that um, it seems quite extreme to give up everything and to just live a bare and simple life. But remember, all, all of these things are not meant to be rules or commandments. They're meant to be supporting precepts, so things that we undertake voluntarily in order to better our meditation practice. And they're things that the Buddha warned would get in the way of our practice if we engaged in them. So the, uh, the abandoning, the refraining from certain things, and the, the, the more we can control and stabilize our activity, our, our bodily activity and our speech, the more it will support our meditation practice. So all four of these aspects of morality are really guidelines and you can take them as far as you want. You can practice them as little or as much as you like and the, the point being that the more you practice them, the more controlled you are and the more uh, focused you are, the more likely it's going to lead to concentration and therefore wisdom. And so it's, it's for our own benefit and if you don't like them, you don't have to keep them, but um, you've been warned, basically. So this is um, a, a, an essential first step, is to understand basically the, the, um, the, the, the boundaries uh, outside of which we shouldn't trespass if we want to, or, or sort of the, the, the realm in which we have to work in order to cultivate concentration and wisdom. And this is the realm of morality, so basic um, concept that's important to learn. Uh, at the very outset of, of our practice of the Buddha's teaching. So there's another uh, concept on our path to understand Buddhism on a basic level. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, see you next time.